Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Today I'm going to talk about Dartmoor Jail because there's a big problem there. In the prison is uh, actually subjected to a natural occurrence of a thing called radon gas, which emits usually from decaying rocks and specifically in areas that are predominantly made of granite. So the granite underground is deteriorating and emitting this gas, and it is highly poisonous. It's colourless, odourless, and it causes uh, illness in uh, in humans. It, it actually creates, uh, causes uh, cancers. And uh, over the years, about 1,000 people a year are diagnosed with lung cancer as a result of inhaling radon gas and it's f- floating up from the underground through the soil into the, the, the prison and it has rendered 180 of the prison cells uninhabitable so they've reduced the capacity of Dartmoor jail and it's now down from its capacity, which was about 700, down to 500. So virtually 200 inmates have been shipped out. But uh, the prison is uh, still plagued with many other problems as well. Uh, in, and one of the big problems is they can't get staff to uh, to work it. I mean, if you've ever been to Dartmoor Jail, I've been a number of times, not as a a prison officer and not as a client Uh, I certainly haven't but I've been to have a look at it when I've been holidaying in uh, in Devon and Cornwall been on to Dartmoor I suggest you go and have a look and imagine working in that place you know it's it was built built by uh, uh, prisoners of the Napoleonic Wars so it's well over 200 years old and go and have a look. It looks like it's built 200 years ago. So they can't get the staff. I mean, in the days when they provided uh, prison quarters, I don't think they do now. I mean, but where do the staff live? I mean, if they aren't living in qu- accommodation provided by the Home Office, then uh, I can't see where else they live because there's no immediate uh, housing in the in the area. It's... It, the location is near Prince Town on Dartmoor. Have a look it up on Google Maps. You know, it's fairly remote. And whilst Dartmoor is uh, an area of uh, natural beauty, I wouldn't say that it's outstanding. I would say that it's uh, a wild place. I mean, what do we know about Dartmoor? Uh, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah, I remember that film. Yeah. So listen, uh, that's what's happening at Dartmoor Jail. They're having to ship inmates out. The staff are complaining. It is dangerous. It's a threat to human life. And the radon gas was first discovered at uh, Dartmoor Jail in the year 2020. And here we are at 2024, and they've only just started shipping inmates out. So... For four years, virtually, they've been subjected to this damn gas, which is uh, a a threat to human life. That's the staff, as well as the inmates. So, as I say, this thing is deadly. Uh, And uh, the deputy, the, the shadow prisons minister for the Labour Party, is stating that the criminal justice system is not fit for purpose. Well, we can see that just looking at the prison estate. They can't recruit staff, they're desperately short, and uh, the the pay isn't sufficient to attract staff. It's happening the same in the police. The, the, The police are complaining that they're insufficiently remunerated. And, of course, if you're a policeman or a prison officer in the Greater London area, how on earth do you afford accommodation? I mean, to rent uh, a two-up, two-down house in London or in the Greater London area will probably cost you £2,000 or more a month. So if you're only on starting rent, I think it's 24000 in the prison service, 
How are you going to afford it? I mean, you're virtually, you virtually... You've got nothing left after you've paid for your rent. They wonder why they can't recruit staff. So they're using the hostess system. They can recruit females to do that who seem to be willing to work for less pay. Mm -hmm. And Dartmoor Jail, yeah, some years ago, uh, a man called Mark Leach, who was a prisoner at the time, staged a rooftop demonstration there, complaining about the brutality of the staff. He climbed on the roof of Dartmoor Jail and he, he had a homemade tent that he took up there. And he stayed up for five days, freezing cold up there. Must be a tough guy, Mark Leach, I tell you. He's the guy who writes the prison's handbook. Yeah, if you've ever seen that, it details all the prisons, how to get there, what the regime is, who the governor is, all the rest of it. Yeah. If you've ever got a copy of uh, Volume 2, you'll see my name in there, because I assisted Mark Leach in uh, meeting the deadline for that book, because he needed a publisher when he came out of prison. And uh, I got him a publisher with Pluto Press in London. They're a left-wing publishing house. Uh, and uh, it's gone on from success to success. It's now... Uh, he's still being published. The Prison's Handbook. And Mark Leach, last I heard of Mark Leach, he was running a chain of restaurants in Thailand. Although I believe he's back in Britain now. And he had a helicopter. Good good on Mark Leach. He'd been in 52 different prisons. He, he found himself stuck on what's known as the ghost train. You've ever heard of the ghost train? You know, where you go from prison to prison because you're a difficult inmate. Or if you're perceived by the system to be difficult, then they put you on the ghost train and you might do three weeks in strange ways then a month in Armley Jail at Leeds and then get flirted off to Durham or wherever you go. You go around the system like that. And Mark Leach had been in 52 different prisons. He ended up in Grendon Underwood because he was diagnosed as being a psychopath. But I knew Mark Leach, he seemed very sane to me, although he'd sued the Home Office 52 times. Sued one governor for waking him up at two o'clock in the morning when he was doing a cell check. And he won. Believe it or not, he did win. So that's the little story today about Dartmoor Jail. Go and have a look. Have a look at it on Google Maps. It's extremely remote. And now, well, I'm not dung the song dinger for a bit, have I? There we are, the song dinger, but I'm not going to sing to you. I'm going to actually uh, read you a poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. This is uh, Kubla Khan. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then I shall begin. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So, twice five miles of fertile ground, with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills, where blossomed many an incensed bearing tree. And here were forests, ancient as the ills, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But oh, that deep, relentless cavern which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover, a savage place, as holy and enchanted as air beneath a waxing moon was beamed by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick paths were beaming, a mighty fountain momentarily was forced, amid whose swift 
half in terminated burst, huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail of leafy grain beneath the thresher's flail, and most these dancing rocks, and once and ever it flung up momentarily the sacred river. Five miles meandering with a misty motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran, then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in tunnel to a lifeless ocean. Amid this tumult, Kubler heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves, where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer in vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maiden on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song? To such a deep delight twould win me, that with music loud and long, I would build that dome in air, that mighty dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and should cry, cry, beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with Holy dread, for on honey dew hath fed, and drunk the milk of paradise. Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. He wrote the rhyme of the ancient mariner, by the way. This is Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. <laughs> 